Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so in this week's episode, we're gonna try and do a little bit of painting, uh, a little bit of a disclaimer. I am not a professional painter. Uh, I've got a little bit of a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of experience that I'll share with you, but uh, uh, take take my advice with a grain of salt and wait till the end of the episode. Make sure this comes out good. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so the most important step when it comes to painting is the preparation, and that's to make sure that the surface is clean and smooth. Uh, this panel is smooth as relative here, um, but it's fairly clean, uh, but we want to try and get any oil and grease off of it, so we're going to do that with some of this uh, grease and wax remover. Uh, this is made by Duplicolor. Honestly, I got the cheapest thing I could find. So let's give that a shot and see how it goes. All right, now that the surface is nice and clean, we're gonna put a coat of primer on it. I'm using this self-etching primer. Uh, this is made by Rust-Oleum. You know, primer comes in all different brands. Uh, not a huge fan of Rust-Oleum, but it's what I could get and it was relatively inexpensive. So we're gonna spray a light coat of this on, probably end up doing two coats and then a regular coat of primer. Let's do it. Okay, so while that's drying up, I figured I'd talk a little bit about primer and why you use it. Um, uh, I apologize if this is basic to some of you. And this, uh, this applies to all kinds of paint too, not just spray paint. So if you're painting out of an HBLP gun or something like that, these principles still apply. So top coats and color coats uh, really aren't designed to stick to plastics and metal. They're designed to stick to primer. So stick the primer on first, then the color coat, and we're all good. All right, that's been sitting up for about an hour, um, so we're ready to apply our top coat. I usually give the primer a little while to, uh, to totally set up before I move on to the top coat. If you're going from primer to primer, it's not that big a deal, or even top coat to top coat, but I like to let the primer harden up before I move to the top coat. So let's talk about that. I'm using this Rust-Oleum hammered finish. If you're wondering why I'm using Rust-Oleum products when I'm clearly not a big fan, well, I'm cheap. <laughs> it's, it's what my uh, auto parts store had, and honestly, uh, with this sort of application, I'm not looking for a perfectly mirrored finish. We're not going for any like automotive clear coat or anything like that. So I just need something tough and cheap uh, and this should do this, the job. The hammered finish is definitely pretty tough and it does a good job hiding any imperfections in there. So I'm gonna be applying a, a nice thin coat from about six inches away. Um, don't try and rush this. You can get it in more than one coat. You don't have to put it on really heavy. Uh, so let's give it a shot. Getting tired of me saying give it a shot. Let's do it. Comment down below if you got any better suggestions. <laughs> All right, let's get moving. <laughs> Try again. Let's do the thing. Captain Planet? No. May the force be? No. Let's just do the thing. This is why I hate Rust-Oleum. All right, it's been a few hours now. I think it's cured up pretty good. Um, it's definitely not a perfect surface finish. Um, you can see there's some pretty big dents that were in the aluminum before we painted. In fact, uh, when I went and stripped the paint off of this, it looked like somebody had bondoed over this surface to get it a little flatter. I, I probably could have done that. It would have come out a little smoother, but this is a shop tool. I'm really just looking to get this uh, protected and looking decent, all one color be a big improvement so I think we accomplished that goal it looks pretty good and on that note you know sometimes working on these projects I get a few comments of people telling us that we're in over our heads or you know we don't know what we're doing and that that's totally cool I'll, sometimes it's very very true uh, in this case I'm sure it's true I mean we've never owned a big lathe uh, it's gonna be a really big project putting this thing back together but uh, you know sometimes it's, it's just about guts and making those mistakes uh, can teach you way more than just doing it right the first time. So, uh, I mean, we spent $200 on this lathe and I think uh, making those mistakes on this is, is really what this is all about. I'm really looking forward to uh, 
to figuring out what I don't know. So that's definitely not a bad thing. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, a few shout outs to you guys. Uh, you guys sending me uh, links to motors and stuff. That's awesome. I really appreciate you guys taking out time of your day to do that. That's totally cool. So we're getting pretty close on getting a motor. So stay tuned for that. Also, in a week or two, we're going to have an episode on scraping in the ways. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with that means, just uh, search on, on uh, YouTube or Google or whatever. Uh, it's, it's a whole process. I've never done it before. I'm really looking forward to checking it out and trying it. Um, it. Again, I'm sure we're in way over our head when we're doing that, but if any of you have any advice for us on, on scraping in for the first time, that would be awesome. So please comment down, uh, down in the comments area. That would be great. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Oh, we've got a new Instagram account. Definitely go check that out. I'll link that down in the doobly-doo if you guys want a little sneak peek of what's coming out. Well, that's gonna do it. See you guys.